All right, so the next thing that I'm going to be doing here is uh, working on the power circuit, the controller, for our solenoid here. Uh, so this solenoid, I don't know, let me see if I can... I think it's got something written on it somewhere. Here it is. Uh, yeah. So it says it takes 12 volts, and I think it's like 3 amps at 12 volts, something like that. But the resupplier for this thing, they say that you can actually actuate it down to 6 volts. And at 6 volts, it only takes like 1.2 amps or something like that. So, I mean, we want to definitely drive it at a lower voltage. We don't care if it actuates a little more slowly. That's fine. Uh, but, I mean, our supply here, I need a beefy supply because this thing still, even at, you know, like 6 volts or whatever, it still takes over an amp. So, I had a beefy supply lying around, but it's 19 volts. It goes into a laptop. So, I've got to step that down. And I decided to go with a, uh, with a buck converter. It's kind of like a switching mode uh, regulator deal. Uh, it's, this, it's this bad boy right here, actually. On uh, LM2596. So I got this guy. And the advantage of these things is that they're efficient, right? A linear regulator, what it does is it basically, it ditches the extra voltage by just basically dumping the energy out as heat. It's very inefficient. Uh, whereas these guys here, they're efficient. They're efficient in terms of amps. So if I'm drawing you know, like two amps at five volts, it's not gonna draw two amps from the 19 volt source, it's gonna draw less than that. And uh, funny story, how it achieves this is it uses, it's switching mode, so it uses an inductance. When I first got this thing, I didn't think about that, I just bought the regulator, I didn't buy the inductances. So I got it and I'm like, oh, oh, I started, I went, okay, I'm gonna look up uh, how to use this thing, I'm gonna look up an example circuit. I just bought it basically with the same mindset as you would have with like a you know like a linear regulator like this boy here. These guys, you 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 just hook them up into the input and the output and they're ready to go. Maybe you throw on a capacitor, some filtering. That's all you need. But these guys are not quite that in, quite quite that simple. You need an external inductance. You need a pretty beefy diode to run them. I didn't have any of that stuff, so I wanted to test this out. So I decided I'll just test it out with one of my linear regulators, and it works. But um, when I put the temperature probe on this boy, and not this one, but LM317, I believe, a variable one. I think I was running it at like 7.5 volts. And uh, when I put the temperature probe on him, after actuating this thing for maybe like, I don't know, 10 seconds, it was like up to like 120 degrees Celsius. So I was like, geez, that's, that's real hot. That's hot, hot, hot. So uh, definitely want to use this boy. Um, this boy is good for a number of reasons. Efficient, doesn't get hot, and uh, has a control. You can see here, there's an on-off control here that I can use to control this bad boy here. So, I mean, it'll be nice. I can control it from my pick, and I don't need a separate power transistor to switch it on and off into the solenoid. So that's cool. Um, but yeah, I didn't have the parts, so I ordered... Uh, additional supply. Here's the here's the booty. Here's all the goodies. I got uh, inductances here. Got some beefy capacitors. Probably too beefy. I don't even think these will fit into the enclosure that I bought. Got these beefy bad boy um, shot key diodes. You need these guys when you work with inductances. Probably be good. I mean, it, it's obviously essential for this circuit here. You can see the D1 right there. Um, but we might also need another one for the inductance. Maybe not. Normally, if you're going to drive like an in, uh, drive like a solenoid like this with a power transistor MOSFET, you would need one of these guys here. I think it's called a I don't remember what it's called, like a pass through or a fly through or a fly back. I don't know what it's called. It doesn't matter. But anyways, problem with this does not. It's too beefy. It doesn't fit in my breadboard. He's thick. T-H-I-C-C thick. So I'll probably have to solder on some wire onto this so I can get it into my breadboard. But yeah, that's what's, uh, that's what we're doing. Oh yeah, and I got some, because 102, 120 degrees Celsius is a little monk, I guess. Even though I don't think these guys, this is going to use as much power. 
And this guy, just driving the microcontroller is fine. But just to be safe, got some heat sinks, got some heat spreaders, got some screws for that bad boy. So we're going to have a fun time. We're going to wire this all up. I'm going to do some tests with my multimeter. And I'll be back when I got something working. All right, so here it is in all of its glory. We got our buck converter. We got, let's see if I can get my finger in there. Here's, there's my finger. Uh, so this, yeah, we got our shot key. We got our inductance. This big old, look at this big old fat capacitor here. Way more than we need. And uh, the star of the show, the, uh, where's my finger? There it is. The LM5, I don't know if you, oh uh, yeah, this camera's pretty sweet. Huh? two five nine six so i got this hooked up i think you I don't know if you can see here but i have my uh i've got my multimeter hooked up here in series and with of course our bad boy here the uh, the solenoid you, you can see inside of the tube there you can actually see the uh the valve i don't know what you call it, the valve head maybe i don't know so what i'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down here and uh, first I'm gonna plug this in very important well, not super important but a little important is I found out it's much better to plug this in than it is to keep this plugged in and connect here because the inrush into this capacitor is insane you always get like a big spark I'm afraid it's gonna ruin the capacitor sooner rather than later but I mean this this uh, AC adapter, this was built by Neck, so I'm, I'm sure it's probably got good um, prevention of inrush. Much better than I have here, which is to say nothing at all. So, we got this hooked up. It is currently passing zero amps because, uh, I don't know if you can see here, but um, let me see here. Where is it? So the pin... On the very right hand side of this regulator it is the on off pin so if you pull it up and it's pulled up right now you pull it up and it turns this thing off you pull it to ground or you leave it open and this thing will start pumping out the jams so we are going to let me sh I'm gonna put my finger on this button here I'm gonna show you guys the inside of the valve and I'm gonna push her there you go you see it is indeed working so let's take a look at the uh, the amperage turn this on yeah we're sucking about 1.5 amps so you know it's a it's a decent amount of current draw you can see here I've got the uh, these two resistors they are the controller for the variable uh, voltage output. So I've got this set up to give about seven volts, which is good. The uh, I think I mentioned this before, but the the, the manufacturer, the the the, the uh, specification for this thing is twelve volts, but the reseller said that from their testing they could get it to actuate down to six volts. So I'll give that a little bit extra, put it up to seven volts, and that means we can actuate and we can keep it open with less current draw. Now the other thing that we want to kind of um, be aware of here is our thermal characteristics. So certainly the, the buck converter here, the LM2596, is going to get warm and toasty. Also this diode is probably going to get toasty and possibly capacitors. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just rework this for a second and then we're going to take a look at the heat. I'm going to run it for a bit. And then I'm going to put a temperature probe on it and see, yeah, see what we're looking at. All right, so I removed the multimeter out of series from the circuit. Now, into the multimeter, I have plugged in my temperature probe. It is currently resting on the heatsink of the uh, regulator, reading 28 degrees Celsius. All right, let's turn this bad boy on and see how hot she can get. Here we go. 29, 30, 31, 32, yeah, it's going up. It's getting hot, hot, hot. All right, so it's got up to 65 
the uh, the rate of increase. Oh, I thought I said it was well. I, it's mainly making a liar of me. I thought it was slowing down, but it's back up again. 68, 69. Okay, the magic number. We've reached it. We've reached our gold. We goal. Uh, let's see if I take this and I put it right here. What are we looking at? 60. You know, don't don't freak out on me. 61. Yeah, so it's already cooling down, I guess. I would say 60, or 61. Yeah, okay. So let's take a look at some of the other parts here. The diode is cooler. It's much cooler, which is good because the diode doesn't have a heat sink on it. So it's going to need to be able to remain cool with uh, less support. But I mean, I don't, I don't really want this thing running at like 60 degrees, 69, 70. So we're definitely going to put a larger heat sink on this bad boy and see what that looks like. And I mean, let's, I don't want to touch that. Let's take a look at the, the capacitor. The capacitor is definitely not hot at all. So that's good. Caps are running cool. Doctor is probably a little warmer. 30. 31. Yeah, it's it's a little it's a little toasty, but it shouldn't be too bad. It's got that big iron core too to see to soak up a lot of the heat. So it's really it's really I guess this bad boy that we gotta worry about. And I mean once this uh, wait I'm not showing this this bad boy that we gotta worry about here. Yeah. And uh, once I it's hard to do things. So yeah, I'm gonna put. A heat sink on this guy and we're gonna see how warm he gets with the heat sink in place all right so we got a little bit of a problem here two problems actually so you look in here you see that the uh, oh, there. heat sink here it's got a little bit of extra space on the bottom that we don't like because that means that we don't have a lot of room for these terminals to stick out and get enough length to get into the breadboard. It's also got this, uh, I don't know if you can see it here, yeah, it's got this peg in here uh, for mounting and that is kind of annoying for the breadboard. So what I'm actually going to try to do is I am going to, let me see if I can show you guys, I'm going to try to mount it backwards just for our test. We'll still get decent contact between the heat sink on the, on the device and the larger heat sink, but uh, you, it won't be a perfect test. It'll be okay. We'll, we'll try it out. All right, so you see what I was talking about here. I got it screwed in other way around, but we should get decent contact between the uh, the heat component on the chip itself and this larger heat sink. We've got the uh, silicon shim in here, heat spreader. And yeah, so we'll, we'll try this out. We'll see uh, what kind of thermal performance we get. And it'll be a decent approximation of what we'll get in the actual final product. All right, let's, uh, yeah, let's, we got this plugged in here. You gotta admit that looks a little badass, don't it? Uh, let's try the, uh, the solenoid out. It's working. Okay, let's, uh, let's run her for a bit and see what kind of temperature we can get. All right, I've got my temperature probe kind of held down here with the pliers propped up against the device. We're reading 27C. It is powered, but is not actuated. Let's uh, get my finger in here without touching any live wires. All right, and we are actuating. What is the temperature looking like? 27, 28, 29. It's heating up. It is heating up slower than it was last time. A lot slower. At this point, it was going like three or four times faster, the speed up. And, uh, yeah, it's a very gradual warming up here. I'm going to let this run for a while. And uh, we'll see how hot we get. I mean, in the, in the actual application, because the reservoir on the humidifier ain't that big, this solenoid probably will not be actuated for more than, like, a minute or two, maybe. That's all you need to, to refill the reservoir on the bottom, is what I'm guessing anyways. I haven't done any testing yet. So I don't expect us to be able to, you know, have to run this load for, you know, like extended periods of time. But it would be nice to get an idea of uh, what the heat situation would be like if it were run.
for extended periods of time. So that's what we're doing right now. And it's looking, it's looking very stable. As the heat goes up, the heat differential between the heat sink, the temperature differenti differential between the heat sink and the ambient air will be higher, so then we'll get more transfer of heat, and uh, this thing will stabilize. All right, so I mean, we've been running here for like two minutes continuously, and it seems to stabilize. It's trying to go to 43, yeah, but it seems pretty darn stable at this right here so I'm gonna say well 44 okay we're still going up no 43 no 44 I'm gonna say yeah I'm gonna call it like maybe at the current ambient temperature in this room which is like I don't know like 25 26 we're looking at like a 45 degree operating temperature steady state somewhere around there maybe yeah definitely under 50 I would say so we turn this bad boy off, and uh, we should see, well the temperature, I mean, this thing is larger so it stores more heat, so it shouldn't drop super fast. Slower to go up, but also slower to go down, but we can see, yeah, it's dropping. It is going down gradually, and uh, yeah, so I'm happy with this, and it'll be a little, it'll be slightly better uh, in the actual circuit, because we'll have more contact between, because right now it slips upside down and we'll flip it right way around we'll have more contact between the device and the heat sink and the heat sink and the device will also be soldered into the board so there'll be more places to sink that heat into uh, but yeah for right now it looks good let me just try one thing I should have tried this a little sooner but uh, we'll look at the temperature on the diode because I was running that bad boy for quite some time and it seems already pretty low. Maybe 33? Yeah. So, that's it. That is the uh, the power circuit. We're just going to now, instead of actuating it from this uh, push button, uh, we're going to be having the microcontroller pull down the voltage, and that will be what allows this uh, this guy to turn on and off. So I guess the next thing that I'll be looking at on video is the the sensor. Now how we're going to detect the level of fluid in the humidifier reservoir.